Hello and welcome to Computer Science 370 Second Summer Session uh, 2020. I'm Dr. Michael W. Berry, a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and joint appointment in the Department of Mathematics. And I welcome you to this uh, uh, asynchronous delivered online course. <laughs> Uh, what I'm going to do is share with you sort of the syllabus online in the Canvas page for the course and show you some different features that I'll want you to view and look at as you proceed and give you some guidelines on how the course is going to work. Your GTA will be Ben Sargent, um, and I will show you some contact information <clears throat> about myself and Ben uh, in just a moment. Uh, before I get started, I have been a professor in the department here, um, well, for the university. I've been a professor here for almost 30 years um, before the computer science department merged with the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in 2007. I was the uh, last department head of computer science when we were in the College of Arts and Sciences. Subsequently, I was associate head um, for over five years uh, at the beginning of the of the new department, um, when especially when we relocated to the Min Cal building in 2010. So this course is on scientific computing, and scientific computing is very uh, very important to me because my career has been based on the kinds of computations related to what we do in uh, applied science, and um, I had a similar course to this when I was an undergraduate, and it really wanted me. It really encouraged me to focus on computing for solving problems in science. So um, let's just start by looking at the Canvas page, which I'm sharing here on the screen. Um, again, you're enrolled in the class, so you should have access, and the course has been published to Canvas, so you should be able to access it right now. This course runs from July 6th to August 6th, so you pretty much have a full month um, to work on this material. And um, and I, I think I've laid out a schedule that I think is reasonable, but yet you do have to keep up. First of all, the required textbook is Numerical Methods in Engineering with Python, third edition by Jan Kiosilas. It's published at a Cambridge University. Um, and the next book that is required is a, a Zy book, um, which has uh, already been charged to your um, vol account, and uh, I'll go through the Zybook uh, information in just a minute. Uh, the Zybook is basically used to help you become a little bit more proficient in Python or even introduce you to Python uh, if you've not used the Python programming language. Um, so don't feel discouraged if you haven't used it yet. I, the Zybook does a wonderful job of introducing to you to the fundamental concepts which you will use um, to develop solutions for your homework and uh, on the quizzes and exams. All right. The best thing that I can tell you about the, the textbook is that you have access to it for free. So when you go, again, here we are on the syllabus page. If you click this link here, you will get free access to the book, which is made available through Hodges Library. I already have the link up, so I'm just gonna show it to you. This is what it looks like. And again, um, it shows you the, if you wanted the hard co copy of the book, of course, you're, you're welcome to purchase it on your own. I suspect most students won't need to do that. Um, this is what it looks like. It has a Python <laughs> snake on it, and we're looking at version three. Um, but when you click on that link, you are provided access to PDFs of all aspects of the book, from the front matter to the preface, um, the first chapter, which is basically an introduction to pro, uh, the Python programming language, and then the series of chapters, which we will all cover. Uh, so just scanning through this, uh, linear solving systems of linear algebraic equations, we'll definitely cover that. Uh, interpolation and curve fitting, roots of equations, numerical differentiation, numerical integration, and depending upon how much time we have left, uh, some of the work on uh, numerical differential uh, DPQs, which is related to initial value problems. Chapters eight and higher, we will not have time to cover in this course, all right? And there are some dependencies and list of program modules. In other words, the software that's actually demonstrated in the chapters is available um, on these links as well. <clears throat> so, good news on that. There was no, there's really no charge to get access to the uh, to the ebook, um, but um, you'll need to um, uh, you'll need uh, make sure you have access to the Zybook. So the Zybooks is next. So the Zybook is uh, again was uh, the cost of it was charged to your 
um, vol account. And the goal of the Zybook is to help you get up to speed in Python programming. And the advantage is, is that you could be working on that right now. You have until um, three weeks into the official summer two session to complete the work. And in the activities of the Zybook, if you've not uh, if you're not familiar with it, I'll demonstrate it in just a second. But many of you I know have used iBooks. You've had courses with me and other faculty in our department or other departments which use them. Wonderful interactive books that give you just opportunities to participate in problem solving using the concepts. Not so much a real textbook, but just the opportunity to get a sense of do I really understand this by solving some problems and having some interactive uh, uh, activities. So, um, so Getting access to the Zybook, um, you know, is is uh, is pretty straightforward. I have links here uh, uh, that you can click on to to get access to it. Um, but if you um, uh, if you uh, I was going to say uh, the, the I'll show you a link to it from the perspective of doing the activities in just a second. All right, because uh, when you work on the problem on the activities in the Zybook, I need you to access them through Canvas so that you can get all the points submitted to your gradebook. So you're earning up to a, a, a thousand and twenty seven points is illustrated here. So you're trying to get those many points. And as long as you do all the activities, you will. Um, but you need to authenticate the Zybook through Canvas first so those points can transfer. And I'll show you that where that link is in just a minute. I'm going to finish this page and then we'll move on to the other pages. Um, so again, the scope of the course is focused on the solution of scientific problems common to natural and physical sciences and engineering. And your homework is all submitting Python script. So our GTA, uh, Ben, will be uh, running your scripts and making sure that they're complete and accurate and documented so that we understand how you decide to model the problem. Um, again, here's the schedule. The first week is pretty much, and I'll go through a formal course schedule in a minute, but this just gives you an illustration of the uh, topics that we do cover. And I mentioned that just a minute ago when we were looking at the ebook version. The prerequisites for the course are Computer Science 140 and Math 251, which is Matrix Algebra. And uh, now some of you may uh, not have Computer Science 140, but you have enough programming background that I've allowed you to take the course. So, you know, I do allow other students from other departments to come in and take this course. I think it's valuable information. Um, so if I've waived that for you, you know, that's fine. Uh, grading procedures, here's how it works. Again, you will uh, earn the points by working through the Zybook um, programming training, and that will earn you 10% uh, of the course grade. The regular homework assignments, there'll usually gonna be a couple of those each week. Uh, that's 30%. You will do it uh, a week, at least one in case some cases two, three uh, or two quizzes per week online on Canvas. Uh, they will count 40%. And the final exam is online as well, and it counts 20. Um, as pointed out here in boldface, though, the lowest grade will be dropped of the quizzes. So I allow you to have you know one instance where maybe things didn't go so well in that quiz. No problem. The lowest quiz will be dropped. Okay. All quizzes and finals uh, on the final are taken on Canvas. Um, if any of you uh, do file with disability, Office of Disability, I'll make sure that the extra time is allocated um, for that quiz. Um, and of course, um, you know, I, I really uh, uh, strongly discourage you from using online chat rooms and blogs to post and receive answers. This, this needs to be an assessment of your work. Um, this is not group. This course is not group based work. There are no group projects. This is all individual based. And so I expect that work to be done individually. All right. Um, code submissions uh, with every homework that's posted on Canvas, you will be provided a grading rubric. Basically, that's just telling you how the menu that the GTA is going to use to um, to score your, your work. And so you should look at those rubrics very carefully. Um, to make sure that you've covered everything that was required, um, because if you omit that, then you can't earn those points, right? And as indicated also, you know, again, I assume you will go back and read the syllabus word for word, but each script that you submit should have your name, net ID, assignment number uh, as a header of the file, and you, we do expect some documentation. Doesn't need to be essay level documentation of code, 
but just some simple documentation of you know how you manage to how you know what 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 the design of this loop is what its intention is what this function call does things like that it doesn't have to be overly verbose just the illustration of what your contribution is to the problem um, and one thing i will say is that because we don't expect students necessarily to have a knowledge of python going into this and you're learning it with the zybook we do provide some templates um, for the problems so that that might make the output formatting easier not only for you to to have to so you don't have to worry about it but also to make it easier for our gta to grade so there's usually a template provided for you to fill in the details um deadlines of the course there are no makeup quizzes in uh programming so basically think no makeups you need to make sure you make all the deadlines you'll be getting email from me on a regular basis during the course after when we start july 6th and to remind you of deadlines make but again the course schedule i'll show you in just a minute will help as well um q a um if anytime you have questions uh, about the material homeworks or anything about, that has to do with the course use the link to piazza the link is provided here we use a piazza page so that you can basically post it 24 7. i can't guarantee i'll wake up in the middle of the night and answer your question um, but ben your gta he might be uh, up late at night and he might be able to check so um, but we'll do our best to respond to all your questions. And the advantage of Piazza is that all the students' questions, uh, assuming they're publicly posted, um, the, all the students get the benefit of those answers. If you feel the need, though, to make a, your, your posting private, uh, you are welcome to do that as well, to me or to um, Ben. Um, the grading schema I use, this is my default grading schema for this course. It's a little bit more relaxed because it is asynchronous and online. So you can see the distribution of, uh, of the averages for an A, for an A and A minus and B plus and so forth. Um, and for the most part, for the several years that I've offered this class online, some or two, this has pretty much worked pretty well. But you know, if I need to make some adjustments, I will based on how the grade distribution turns out. So uh, here's the contact information I promised you earlier. If you click on this link, uh, this is all under Pages. So you'll be looking under the Pages tab, and you can see. Um, there's my office phone number, to, but because of COVID, don't expect me to be there. The best way to contact me is either post something to Piazza or the email. If it's related to the course content material, I really would suggest that you post everything to Piazza. So Ben and I can both have a look at it. But we have both of our emails for emergency purposes if you need to get in touch with us. So if I go back to the syllabus page, just for a second, this was very important this was the link to the course schedule page so it was under the deadlines area here okay so when you click on um course schedule up oh, i guess i need to make it available but i'll go ahead and, and show it to you what it looks like i haven't posted everything uh, that's available to you yet but when you go to pages you will have the course schedule listed and this is what it will look like okay so i'll make sure that that link is working all right so Here's the course schedule. This is what it looks like. Simple tables that illustrate the five weeks. It's really more like four and a half, but, but here are the five weeks of the course delineated by their dates. These are the topics that are covered that we expect you to complete um, in, uh, in reviewing the video lectures. And um, you can see the first week is pretty much de uh, dedicated to Python. Um, the next week is solving linear systems, whether it be by what we call direct methods or iterative methods. Then the third week we get into polynomials of relation, curved cubic lines, least squares fitting, Bezier curves that are used in graphics and so forth, um, and even the sol solution of nonlinear systems. The fourth week is finite difference approximations, Richard extrapolation, how do you compute derivatives using int interpolation. Everything in this course is about numerical approximations, not analytical things we can do in pencil and paper. Okay, um, and then finally, the last week is dedicated to solving differential equations, uh, ordinary differential equations, um, numerically. Now, in the last column are the YouTube playlists. So I have built playlists for all of these. So what this means is when you click on the um, the the link to the playlist, and I'll do that just for uh, just to demonstrate, it will take you to all of the videos uh, for that playlist. And you can see all of them, okay? And you can start from the first one and work all the way through the end on your own, all right? 
but I'll uh, just pay attention to, in a minute, I'll show you the other table. We'll show you when homework is due and when um, uh, the quizzes are done. But it's a good idea to allot yourself enough time. And the advantage of the playlist is you can look at each of these videos and see how long they are. Some are longer than the others. So that can kind of gauge, you know, during the week, how are you going to spend your time doing them? Some of you may be able to knock them all off in one evening. That's possible. But you can see the time it takes to get through each of them. All right. Um, so we'll go back to the syllabus page. And the other thing is the other important table is the homework deadlines and the quizzes. So where you see the topics listed up here and you have the playlist for week one, here you have in this table everything you're going to be responsible for during either the beginning, middle, or the end of that week. And so, for example, you first homework was is basically demonstrating that you can make graphs and use the matplotlib um, uh, Python module to plot uh, data. Um, that is due July 9th, all right? And this link goes to the Canvas link um, for, the def, uh, uh, for the details of that assignment, okay? And I'll show you that in just a second. And then also you have a link to a quiz. It tells you what day it's due. So the deadlines are as indicated here at the bottom of the table are always gonna be right before midnight, all right? Unless I specify otherwise, and there is a case because we have two quizzes coming at the very end in this almost in the same week. Um, they have to be due a little bit earlier. And I will, again, make sure you're aware of that when we get to that time. But when, in other words, if you click on this link right now, you would go to that quiz, but the quiz won't be available. Usually it'll be available a few days ahead of time. Just for an example, if I was to click on this quiz, it would go to the quiz itself and you can see where I have the details specified that um, what the quiz covers, um, the format of it, basically it's multiple choice questions. You have an hour to complete it um, and it has to be finished, for example, Sunday, July 12th by 1159. But it's not available till June, July 10th at 8 a.m. So that gives you, again, a couple of days to complete it. So, so even when you see the deadline on the 12th, realize it's, that's the ultimate deadline of that day, but usually it's released a few days ahead of time, okay? So let's go back uh, to the um, course page again. And again, when you click on the homework, it links over to the Canvas assignment page. And here we are in the assignment tab, right? Homework one, and this gives you all the specifications for you to read. And here's an example of a rubric um, that is being used to generate the 10 points that you can earn on this assignment, okay? So in all the assignments, you're uploading your, your program, your Python program um, for Ben to run, okay, and test, right? So uh, let's go back again uh, to the uh, syllabus just to see if uh, we've covered everything. Um, Again, here's the distribution of the, the weighting of the different um, uh, assessments that we do in this course to get the 100%. Um, you know, you want to keep up. Um, the Zybook work is what I'm gonna show you next. Um, the Zybook is available um, through Canvas in modules. So this is another important tab. The most important tabs are probably pages, quizzes, modules, and assignments, okay? And grades, of course. But, if you click on modules for the course, um, got the course information, which is the, this is just the instructor GTA page. We've already seen that. Um, I will post this welcome video here, all right? This is the, the module for quizzes and the final exam, but this is the important link to access the Zybook. So this is where you launch your Zybook so that you can start working on those activities. And then you can always come back finish it, come back and come back and relaunch this again. It'll remember where you left off. And so when you click on this link, you'll get access to the Zybook and the Zybook looks a little bit like this. And you can see it's broken into 13 chapters there. And you're going to work through all of the activities, all right? So there's, you know, for example, here's the introduction work, um, just the fundamentals. This, for most students, this goes very quickly, especially for computer science students. Um, but here's, for example, variables and expressions, and how do you find variables in Python? And it has wonderful little activities 
And here's an example of our participation activity. And you, you know, click on the activity, work through it, generate some points. And then when you finish the, uh, that section, um, or actually that chapter, you, there's usually a button to press that says, you know, transfer my points, okay? But if you have any problems as you work through the Zybook, uh, earning those points, you can let me know um, because I can go in and look to make sure that you've done the activities and I can move the points over to Canvas if for some reason it won't. But I know that many of you have used this before. There are participating and challenge activities and through this whole exercise of 1,027 points that you're accumulating. But I think you'll find it a lot of, a very useful a way of just testing and understanding, do I really know how to program with this language? Um, and so uh, again, you won't become the most proficient person going through the Zybook, but it gives you enough experience to be successful in this course and to help you launch your way into using the language for your other courses, for your research, senior design, and, and whatever comes down the way. All right. so. Um, so that's, whoops, that's what we needed to do with the Zybook. So um, I just wanted to make sure that that, that was clear. Um, the rest of the modules that were important is this one under the modules tab, course materials. If, uh, there's a couple of options to running Python 3, all right? So you can access Python 3 on our EECS lab machines if you have access to our machines remotely, all right? And this link um, will provide you information on how to do that. But most students actually find it very useful to have the interpreter on your own machine because you're probably going to want to use this language on your own anyway down the road. And so what you need to do is either you know, follow one of these links. I changed this where originally we were using Python 3.4, but you can use any Python 3 version that you can get to work. So some of you are going to put 3.7 on there. That's fine, all right? So I'm just gonna say 3.x. But um, what we do need to do, and for example, I will illustrate you know, for the Mac case, this is how procedures that we've developed through past several instances of this course, things could be a little bit different as the libraries change. But one thing that's very important is whatever version that you get of Python version three in there, Make sure you have a NumPy, N-U-M-P-Y, you know, a version of that installed, and you need to have Matplotlib. So those are the two other modules that must be installed with your Python 3 um, to, be, to do all the work in this course. There's many other modules that are available in Python, depending upon whether you're doing graph algorithms or any kind of optimization and circuits and so forth. But for now, those are the only two external modules we need, NumPy and Matplotlib, right? And if you're having any difficulties getting them installed, you know, Ben, maybe be able to help, with you, help you do that. Um, most students have been pretty successful in getting it installed. Those of you who have Macs or uh, MacBook Pros or uh, Airs or so forth, Python is probably on there, but it's gonna be version 2.6. It's gonna be version two. Apple just has refused to install version three. It hasn't passed their, their safety test for some reason. I don't know why. So um, if you, you know, if you're if you're using a Mac, you're probably still going to have to install your own version, version three. Um, so again, these are useful links uh, and tips on you know uh, Visual Studio. You can install Python within it. There's a link for that. But we've tried to provide a couple of different instances of how you can get access. And again, if those of you just want to remote log into a um, uh, either a Tesla <clears throat> or a Hydra machine in the EECS labs, um, we show you that you can access um, the Python uh, through um, the appropriate Bash shell um, for that. All right. Uh, there's also a link for the so source code from the textbook. It, one way to learn Python, of course, is to run existing code. So you're welcome to click on this link and it will take you to a table and illustrate the chapter that the code comes from. And you can click on any of these and get illustrations of the code um, and save it or open it. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can save it and download it. And then you could you know, play around with it with your interpreter or even test to make sure that your Python installation is working correctly, okay? 
Um, again, there's also the link here to the lecture notes and the videos. That's also under course materials. I also have it linked from the course schedule page. So either way, you have access. Um, but uh, let me click on the lecture notes. So the lecture notes are PDF files. They're broken by chapters. Here's chapter two, for example. Um, this one I will open with Acrobat just so that you can see it. And it's basically just the PowerPoint kind of bullet stuff that I will be working with in the video lectures. So I annotate these lecture notes on the video. So it's a good idea to have them out and available. Um, you could print them out. And as I'm going through the lecture, you could be writing on them with me as I do. Uh, if you have a Surface tablet or a, an iPad, you know, you can use your own uh, interactive tools to, to, to be marking on the PDF file or whatever format file that you want to use for online editing. So, um, so the notes are all there. And again, there's some information that I fill in with you. So we kind of make it a little bit interactive. But the lecture notes are all there. Nothing hidden from you. Okay. All right. So um, I think that's pretty much uh, most of the details that I wanted to cover uh, for this introduction. Um, my background here is the Summit uh, Supercomputer at one time was the world's fastest supercomputer. Scientific computing is a big part of what supercomputers are doing in terms of solving complex problems from climate modeling to actually right now dealing with COVID and trying to figure out all the possible interactions and in genetic structures that might help us understand this disease and hopefully render one day a virus, right? So with that, uh, I'm glad you're part of the course. Um, again, uh, use Piazza uh, to post questions on the material as it comes about. Uh, we'll be starting July 6th. I'll be sending email out to welcome you and to get you started.